personalities can be so difficult. Whether it's someone just like you or someone not like you at all, it can be urge to try to communicate with them in an effective way. Well, in this video, we want to break down uh, the, what's called the DISC uh, personality quadrants. Now, DISC personality has literally been around for a couple thousand years. In fact, it has been so used that you may have heard things like sanguine, choleric, or otter, or uh, uh, Irish setter as we describe different quadrants. Well, we want to keep it really basic. We may not be the most exciting, but we do want to make it easier for you. So we're just going to use the letters D-I-S-C to help you understand the DISC personality quadrants. Let's first divide it into two axes, two ways of thinking of how a person is wired. The first is active or reserved. And so some questions you can ask to find out whether you or the people you care about are active or reserved is really to think about how they act when they walk into a room. An active person will immediately go up to someone and start sharing, start talking and initiating conversation. And they might talk about themselves because that's the perspective they're coming from. Now, a reserved person will walk into the room and analyze the room, hang back a little bit, and when they talk to someone, they're more likely to ask questions and to find out more about that person than to talk about themselves. On the other axis, you've got your relationship and task. Now, a way to look at this is how do you view success? A person who's task-oriented really views success by the completion of the task. They, make, they may make lists. They may uh, really value and, and view a successful day as if everything is checked off that list. In fact, they can get really frustrated if something interrupts their level of task and completion. On the other side, you've got relationship. Now, relationship folks, they view success as how's our relationship? Are we doing well? And if there's a task to be done, maybe that's okay as long as it doesn't hurt the relationship, right? And so you've got these two that could seem competing um, uh, types of people. Some that are very task focused, some that are very relationship focused. Now, uh, this is a continuum. This is not like you're one or the other unless you're uh, out on the fringes a little bit more. And so, so most of us have some level that we like to do uh, a little bit of both. But we're going to keep it more stereotypical for now and say they're task people and they're relationship people. So now that we know the basic gist of it, let's get down to the details of what the D and the I and the S and the C are like. So let's start with the D. They would love for us to start with them. They always want it. <laughs> Ds are uh, very driven and they are task and active people who want to dream about what's on the next hill and go get it. They are very inspired to move forward in a task. And in some ways they can kind of bully or push over people around them because they have a vision for something they want to have accomplished. In fact, people maybe are just uh, as a, a means to getting to an end. Now there aren't very many Ds in our society. Only about 10% of the population is really a, a pure D. And it's probably a good thing because we can't handle too many of them. But they are tremendous leaders and you might see these people in CEO and COO positions of companies. Yeah, now the eyes are also your active people. They're also gonna be engaging in, in uh, the room or uh, making statements but they're more about the relationship. Now, not usually deep relationships, but they are about the relationship. In fact, we sometimes call eyes the inspirers. They want to encourage people. They want to make you feel better. So like our D's are about 10% of the population. Our I's are about 25% of the population. And so a lot more of the people that you might know have a little bit more I in them. But again, they, they view uh, success to that relationship and, and people feeling really good about everything that's going on. Mm -hmm. S's are also very relational, but they are reserved relational and they are 40% of the population. So we have a ton of S's out there. Almost half. And it's a good thing because S's are steady. They're amiable. They're willing to go with the flow. Um, they're great friends and they will mirror what is going on with you. So if you're hurting or you're excited, an S is gonna mirror that and be right there with you and be a great friend. And then finally we have our C's. Now we always wait and do C last, not just because it's the last letter of disc, but because anyone who might be thinking they might be a C absolutely wanted to hear the other three quadrants first. And so our C's are what we call competent. These are people that just will get the job done. Now, like our D's, they're task oriented. 
But unlike our D, they're about a lot more single task at a time. They don't want to take the next hill. They want to measure the hill. They want to survey the hill. They want to make sure the soil samples of the hill. In fact, details are really, really important to our Cs. And I'm glad because like a lot of engineering people, our Cs, I want all of our engineering people to be Cs because they really uh, are the ones that focus on those details to make sure that all the I's are dotted, the T's are crossed, double, triple check. And so they may not be as focused on relationships, but they also do tend to be more reserved, mm -hmm. right? So they're tasked and they're reserved. And so the, res the reserve side, we sometimes say, they don't really want people to be around them. <laughs> That's not always true, but if you're going to interrupt their work, probably not going to be their favorite person. Mm -hmm. Well, we, we, there are assessments out there that you can evaluate someone's personality, but we found more often than not, it's really useful to understand what these are so that you can assess where someone's at at any given time, because then you can modify and connect with them in an even more powerful way. So we've laid out the four quadrants of DISC. You know, one of the things we would love for you to do is think about what you are. Are you active, reserve, task, or relationship? And then which quadrant might you fall into? Now, here's the thing. 85% of the population, they tend to actually be a blend of more than one, what we call dominant quadrant. So if sometimes you may say, well, sometimes at work I'm like this, but at home I'm like that. That makes a lot of sense. So that's why we love using this format. That it's not saying you are one specific thing. It's saying you may have a dominant in one area. But reality is we all have some level that we can uh, work in all four disc quadrants. Well, hopefully this has been enjoyable for you and hopefully it's also been beneficial.